Hello there everybody and welcome back to another Teaching Tips with me Sally Cathcart. Now today what I want to just go on talk about is the, the benefits of really running a repertoire rich teaching studio and the benefit that has on helping your students to develop their motivation. Now I'm not talking about any old motivation, you know, I'm talking about what is called intrinsic motivation. So we talk about two different sorts of motivation. We talk about extrinsic, which is the motivation to learn or to tackle something. And the motivation for this comes from externally, ex extrinsic. And um, if you think about an exam, that is an extrinsic type of motivation. The student's motivated to practice the piano because the exam is coming up. And the closer the date comes, the more likely they are to actually get and do this practice. I'm sure many of you have experienced that in the past. Now, the trouble with that kind of motivation is that often what happens because it was quite challenging for them and because they found it quite an ang it's an anxious sort of feeling um, that after the exam, the motivation disappears again because the motivation wasn't coming from within them. Instead, it was coming from the exam. So what the other kind of motivation is called intrinsic, and this is ex internally generated. It comes from the student themselves, and it's generated by their desire to get better and to learn a piece of music because they want to be able to play it. Now, there are certain conditions that we, the teachers, can create that are going to help with the building of the intrinsic motivation rather than just purely relying on the extrinsic because if you just rely on that then the the external motivation in other words the exams then as I say there will come a point where often the motivation will disappear we can really help to build the intrinsic okay and I just want to I've done a little chart for you let me just bring it over let me just show you why um why and how this this really matters i'll come and stand behind so you can all see me there we go read it all backwards so what we've got here is i've got a little chart and this down here it says challenge okay so this is the low challenge and the high challenge and along the bottom here we've got the word skills so this is about uh, low skill and high skill now when the challenge is high yeah very high um, then this is the sort of the anxiety area. If it's, if it's too high, we get highly anxious and that puts us in a really bad state. We talk about being in a bad state, you know, it literally is stomach churning inside. Um, and along the bottom again, if the skill is too challenging for us, then again, it leads us to a point of anxiety. And often when students are in exams, they are in this, in this corner here. The, 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 the challenge is too high for them of the pieces that they're learning. Um, and the, their skills are not good enough for that. So it all leads to this sense of anxiety and this real sense of um, being out of control, if you like. Down the other end, if the challenge is too low, um, then it leads to boredom, yeah? And if they don't have pieces that are um, uh, sufficient to challenge them, just a little bit, but not too much, then they will just get bored. And the same with their skills. If their skills are not being used uh, enough, then that will also lead to boredom. I mean, this is very brief, broad overview. Obviously, you can go into a lot more detail to look at this. But... What we want is we want a level of challenge that is just slightly above where they currently are, just slightly. They can see it. They can see that they can step into that next level. So we want them somewhere about here, probably. And then we want their skills, again, to be not at the very edge, but moving towards the top of their skill level. So let's say we're about here. And where those two points intersect like this is where the intrinsic motivation is going to build. When they are slightly challenged, both in their, um, in, in their skill level and their understanding. And this will lead to a sense of control over what they're doing. And eventually it should lead them into this state of flow that is quite popular um, at the moment and is a really enjoyable place for them to be. 
So if we have pieces that are too hard for them, always too hard for them, they're always working at the top of the challenge, they're always anxious and they're, because their skills are being pushed. That not a good situation in any, in any case, let alone going into an exam. Whereas if we're working with pieces for them as part of the repertoire rich challenge that is just slightly, slightly above their skill level, then they will feel challenged by these and they will be motivated, therefore, to get and learn it because they know they will be able to master that and move on quite quickly. So just another brief um, reason, really, why the repertoire rich teaching studio is such a positive thing to be embracing. That's not to say that they never learn a piece in, in depth or that they're never slightly taken out of their comfort zone. But it's up to us, the teachers, as the professionals, to be able to make that judgment so that we can get them into this area nearly all the time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. I've certainly enjoyed explaining it to you. I won't be back next week, but I'll see you in two weeks time. Have fun teaching till then. Bye-bye.